The thoughts and opinions on Just Some Podcast are of the hosts and guests and do not represent the views of organizations that employ them or they volunteer for. They are also not responsible for spontaneous black holes or nuclear wars that may occur. You have been been warned. One year ago, two best friends, that's Ben and I, that are nurse practitioners started a podcast to try and educate and reach other advanced practice providers. We did this not knowing if anyone other than our immediate families would listen. Hell, most of the time our wives don't listen. During the past year, Just Some Podcast for Advanced Practitioners has grown to a global conglomerate, educating providers and providing entertainment along the way, mostly at Tom's expense. They have engaged in real conversations about current issues in healthcare, including moral injury, violence in nursing, the education of nurse practitioners, and crowdsourcing diagnoses, with a few cuss words along the way. So far, we have been downloaded over 29,000 times. 29,000 times? Holy shit, is that right? That can't be right. In 57 different countries, on all seven continents, and that includes Antarctica, because I know some of you didn't know that was a continent, but it is, and we got it. Our show has become a syndicated radio show on Helium Radio Network and recently got approved for the iHeartRadio app as well. And we are also consistently in the top 100 medical podcasts in the United States on iTunes. So to everyone, from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you. We say thank you to everyone that has listened over the last year and everyone that continues to listen now. Because of you, the show has become what it is, and we hope that you will continue to join us for the meteoric rise as we continue to grow and get even better, because it's going to. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another fun-filled, exciting, and special episode of Just Some Podcast. This is Tom. Hey, this is Ben. Tom, why don't you tell everybody why it's a special episode? Well, it's not to the day i don't think it's to the day but it's not to the day but this is our one year anniversary special maybe extravaganza would be a better word Extravag- oh i like that yes yes extravaganza yeah uh, <laughs> i don't know i think we actually released our first episode on the 9th of september last year so we're actually recording this on the anniversary of 911 but yeah it's been a year man isn't that crazy it very crazy because <laughs> i mean I don't know what I expected, but I, d- I don't know if I really thought we were going to be quite as successful as we have been. I mean, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just meant like, I just figured we'd have 50 listeners. Yeah. Most of which were drunk sailors that accidentally downloaded us looking for something else. <laughs> and uh, that pretty much be where we're at. Yeah. Kind of, you know, it's been weird. Kind of like the voiceover alluded to, you know, it's been kind of a... An interesting year for just some podcast. You know, we started out just with the, hey, let's do this and see if it ever catches on or if anybody listens or if it's just going to be for us doing this for fun. And we still do it for fun, but it's grown to quite a media conglomerate. You know, I mean, we're not quite Howard Stern, King of All Media yet, but I mean, we're we're knocking on the doorsteps, I think, you know. I, <laughs> knocking on the doorsteps in another dimension, but yeah. still, yeah, yeah, I'd say we're... I don't know. I, I mean, I guess we could talk about this for a second. I mean, it's our show. Fuck it. We'll say what we want. But I don't think people realize that a year ago, we were two guys talking over Skype with yeah. our Apple, or well, at least for me, it was my Apple headphones with the mic as- attached to it and just recording a phone call, basically. Yeah. And, uh, and if you listen to those first few episodes, it sounds like it. <laughs> 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 Which, so, hard truth, I have never listened to him. You should go back and just listen to him. I, 
I can barely bring myself to listen to current episodes, let alone past ones. And it, first of all, it's me. I cannot stand the sound of myself. Oh, it's terrible. But I try and learn from what I'm doing, especially when we have guests, like what type of questions can I ask better? Was I interrupting, etc. So sometimes I'm forced to listen to myself, but if I can avoid it, I absolutely do. Yeah. Fair enough. But you know, I went back and listened to like, the first couple of episodes and just even a few minutes of it. And it's like, Oh my God, that sounds horrible. <laughs> just even audio. quality wise. Almost like we were recording without a uh, high powered microphones or with uh, appropriate software. And we didn't really know what we were doing with editing <laughs> or appropriate software. Yeah. does help anything. Like it was just, it was crazy. And then we've, we've come a long way. I mean, we have a, you know, professional recording software that we use now. We, have professional microphones and we're all over. Yet we have not found a way to be professional. (laughs) Sometimes perhaps more me than you. So, and I mean, we've had lots of amazing guests. I mean, it's been crazy to think about just the amount of people that are either we've reached out to, or there's reach out to us and be like, Hey, you know, can I come on the show? It's just, it's amazing. It is amazing. I consistently wonder what they were smoking prior to giving us a shout out or contacting us again like so many other things in the show all the credit goes to ben he has got this magic like ability to send someone an email and then they respond with sure i'll come on the show i'm like what? i tried one time for an episode that we're still working on trying to get together it involves operation galactica uh true. and and nothing I, I've got nothing, That's but not completely true, Tom. Now you did get Pollyanna on the show. Actually, Pollyanna reached out to me, so I didn't yeah, even do that. Yeah. <laughs> I made the arrangements, but she was the driving force. But I mean, I guess that shows that she actually liked the show enough to be like, hey, I want to come on your podcast and. So that's positive. I'm, I'm just saying Ben truly is the pillar, the rock that just some podcast is built on. And he likes to shake his head and act like it's not true, but it is true. And I'm fine with that. And I think he just deserves the credit that he doesn't always get because we have piss poor production staff, like Sam, the producer and Kyle and John and Jason and everybody else. They, uh, they're just really sucking. Eh, So what can you do? But I do appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. What's the plan? Well, I think we're just winging this entire episode. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of a celebration of us, which is weird for us to do, because normally we have a guest on that we want to talk to or, or about and or with, I guess, I just, we don't talk about them. <laughs> but it's just kind of a celebration of where we're at and where we're going and, and to let people in a little on the on kind of the behind the scenes. When you start a podcast or when you're in a podcast, you kind of build a family of fellow podcasters that are, like the indie podcast. True. I'm not talking like, you know, like Joe Rogan doesn't call me up and be like, hey, man, I listen to the show. It was great. <laughs> you know, but. If, if Joe Rogan ever hears our voices or contacts us, I will shit my pants. Well, yeah. I don't know. I Maybe I wouldn't even do that. I would definitely pass out. I really don't know what would happen. But, I mean, I've been honored to just make friends in the podcasting world. You know, like Jeff, the NP dude, I reached out and talked to him several times. Christine from Antidote Stories and Medicine, Mike and Ryan from Pop Like 101. I mean, it's just, it's, it, you kind of build this circle of friendship with people who do the exact same thing that we do just in different formats or hitting different audiences. And it's just kind of cool to see that family type environment and kind of helping us try to support each other's podcasts. So it's just been really, it's been a fun ride so far. That is one way of putting it. And uh, speaking of guests, I think this would be, since we're just winging this whole episode, and I'm fine with that. I'm cool with it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's time we do mention one of our guests. Very special congratulations and shout out to I'm Nurse Liz, who recently had a baby. And from the Just Some Podcast family, we wanted to say congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. That's awesome. I Seeing that she had pictures up on Instagram, so I thought that was pretty sweet. So, congratulations. That's pretty cool. Speaking of other guests, Tom, we did reach out and we were like, hey, you know, if you guys want to send us audio or, or video or anything like that, you know, please do. So, I do have one out there. That, you know, now's the best time we need to play one. So, here's one of our past guests giving us a little audio for our anniversary show. 
Hey guys, it's Greg from Tech Crossover. Just wanted to tell you guys happy anniversary on the first year from your favorite EMR advocate to my favorite two practitioners who chart first and don't complain at all. <laughs> um, seriously, you guys do great work. It's an amazing podcast. I think it's only going to get bigger and better from here. So here's to many more years and many more episodes. So, yeah, that was Greg. That was Greg. Our EHR episodes. So. It was. And you know what? Well, Seriously, he said something that I still incorporate into stuff I talk about today where – he, he literally said, if you gave me enough money, I could get us on the moon tomorrow when we were talking about how to solve some of the problems. And he said it was money. And I was like, that is one of the truest things I've ever stinking heard in my life. So I literally have incorporated that into my life where people say, well, how yeah. do you get this done? I'm like, money. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> Give me enough money. I get you to the moon tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Greg is his, still working on launching his podcast, Tech Crossover, and he's actually reached out to us and wants us to be a guest. So that'll be kind of interesting for us to be on the other side of the the questions. And so I'm looking forward to that. You're coming up pretty quick. Oh, he'll regret that soon enough, but that's okay. I mean, everyone's got to make those mistakes when they first start up a podcast. So there you go. So <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, well, it's not like he doesn't know what he's getting into. So that's his fault. That is, that is true. A couple of people reached out to us on social media. Tracy said, Feliz Aniversario, which I'm assuming is happy anniversary in Spanish. I probably butchered that. And Tracy, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. All those listeners in South America just went to four. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except My for Brazil. Apologies. They don't know. They speak Portuguese. They don't care. So I'm white. My wife is Mexican, so I didn't learn the language. I'm sorry. Shocker. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming as many times as she's cussed at you in Spanish, you would know something by now. Really? She doesn't much. <laughs> much. Mostly in English. So. That's because she wants you to know what she's saying. Good point. Yeah. Now, reached out to us on social media. Congratulations on your one-year mark. You guys rock. So that was pretty cool. Thank you, Nell. Well, Tom, man, we talked about what some of our favorite episodes were, and we want to talk about that. But I think we can both agree on what the worst episode thus far has been. Would you agree with that? Now, I want people to understand, we have not told each other what no. our favorite picks are. And we didn't do a worst picks, because I think that's unfair. Because I think we're both would be overly critical of everything if we picked worse. But I can guarantee without a doubt that without having spoken so about... We, we can say it on three, and we'll see if we say the same thing. Okay. We're talking just the worst episode overall. Ready? One, two, three. Alcohol. Alcohol. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, weirdly enough, that episode has one lived in infamy. There is a lot of people that are like, oh, God, you got to hear that. And I cannot True. fathom for one reason why they would want to do that to themselves on purpose. So there's that Two, in some strange way. It's on my uh, it's on my honorable mention as as one of my favorites <laughs> because I can understand that. <laughs> it, it was, was definitely it was technically and as a point in the show the low point <laughs> okay <laughs> yes but it really i mean truly it was a fun episode not so much fun with the edit having to go back and re-record oh, but God. and the hangover <laughs> <laughs> but it really was fun to kind of let loose that was one of the first times we really just oh yeah we just said the, fuck it yeah yeah, and it was like, here we go. Weird science and movies and all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, come out. boy, yeah. Uh, and you know what? I know people that have reached out to me, like directly, not through the Just Some Podcast, have really, really liked that episode. I'm just saying, maybe we could do like a tamer version of that in the future. Maybe. Maybe. Alcohol version two. Yeah, like uh, maybe like our Christmas special or our New Year's Eve special or something could be alcohol. Again. I do want to say, though, and here's why it was worse to me, because, man, it was like trying to hold on to a runaway train. Like, I had no idea where it was going to go. Not that we ever understand exactly where these conversations are going to lead us, but, you know, we're adult males capable of making a coherent sentence. And that quickly went out the window <laughs> during yeah. that episode. So, yeah, I, I still love it. It's like a it's like a special spot in my heart, but it was by far also what I would say is our worst episode. Like when you have to re-record half an episode, 
that is a sign that there was yeah. it was so great in theory. <laughs> yeah, no, it was one of those it was like on paper that looked amazing. Like, yes, oh yeah. Let's show some out, you know, show the effects of alcohol. We'll get intoxicated while we record. You'll be able to see hands on how alcohol affects the body. And I mean, I guess to that point we did prove that. <laughs> oh, absolutely, beyond a doubt. Maybe that's why the Nobel Peace Prize Committee hasn't got a hold of me for the Sudoku. They're like, we're still working on your one for the effects of alcohol. So uh, there you go. If you win a Nobel Prize for that, sir, I salute you. <laughs> well, we thoroughly <laughs> proved it. So there you go. So uh, if you haven't listened to it, feel free. Just I don't say this lightly because I have a trucker mouth, so I'm used to it. I'm assuming most of our listeners are aware of that by now, but that is Definitely an episode that requires a adult content warning <laughs> before you listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to listen to that one with kids in the car. <laughs> oh yeah. That would be rough. Maybe that's the episode that you're like, look, if you have like a, you know, a 15 year old kid at home, you're like, look, you need to listen to this to hear how stupid <laughs> you are drunk. This is why you don't do this. That's absolutely hundred percent. Yeah. On point. That will ruin. They're like, I sound like that. And they're like, yeah, listen to this Tom guy. That's what you sound like. They will probably sober up right then. That's true. Yeah. Well, Tom, why don't you kick off the whole like favorite episodes? Um, Why don't you give us one of your favorites? Okay. So let me preface this whole thing by saying one, it was really hard. We, We decided just to limit it down to three. Otherwise we could talk all day. Like we could probably dissect every episode in some way. So we both decided to pick three. They may or may not overlap. Yeah. But I don't want anyone to think that there were episodes that I didn't have a blast on that just because they weren't. To me, it wasn't so much favorite. It was most memorable. Let's put that's how I want to label mine. Okay. Is they weren't so much favorite because all of our guest ones have been great. Like the one of those one of the last ones with Dieta uh, talking about Indiana or yoga nurse. Lindsay had fantastic times. Still talk to them now. It was a great time. So I don't want anybody to think that just because their episode didn't make the top three, there was something bad. But I will say probably the first one that comes to mind is Kidney Stones. (laughs) Okay. And I will tell you why is because I had a first time listener reach out to me personally. And he literally said... Quote, I had to turn off my phone and then throw it across the room. He felt like he could feel the pain through his phone. And he's like, Tom, that was some of the grossest stuff I've ever heard. And this is a non medical personnel, by the way, but he's like, some of the grossest stuff I ever heard. I listened to murder and police podcasts and I couldn't handle what I was listening to. And so, and here's the thing is if you've suffered through a kidney stone, that memory is usually pretty vivid and it still is for me. Yeah. So, I mean, I've never had one. No, you never had one, but it was it was fun to talk about and see people's reactions. And honestly, I was literally hoping that somebody listening that was taking care of somebody with a kidney stone would go, oh, my God, I didn't realize or I didn't think about or because it's easy to hear about how much it hurts in theory. It's another thing to hear a person that you consider your peer going, no, that's the worst thing in the world. And so maybe if it helps somebody, it was worth everyone laughing at my pain. And I enjoyed laughing at your pain. <laughs> yes. It, lots of people apparently like it was a laughing at my pain. Yeah. yeah. All the, all the Tom sucks and is in pain episodes seem to do really well. They play well. Yeah. I don't know. So one of my more memorable episodes or one of the first ones that I thought back to the episode with Christine, where we talked about like our, our life from first responder through becoming APRNs that was actually simulcast on, antidote stories in medicine and on our show it was just a real conversation you know we were that was still pretty early on i think it was like 16 uh, ish and so i mean that, that was as tom said when we have guests on it's you know we've had lots of guests say hey do you have questions or do you have specific things you want to talk about and it's like we may have a a, a rough idea of what we want to talk about but we kind of let the conversation guide where we're gonna go you know we we push the button and we talk we feel like that's a more real you get a more real feeling. And that was one of those really good episodes where it was like, this is just like, if you were to walk into the ambulance barn or the police station or the fire department, anywhere like that, ERs, that would have been a conversation that you could have heard 
anywhere in those areas. I mean, it was just, it was real and honest. True. And I think that was also maybe one of the, maybe not the first, but I think the most definitive pivot point where we went from having rough notes and doing lots of research and trying to make sure we had an outline of what we were going to say to we just decided, hey, we're just talking to Christine. You know, let's just have a conversation. And it seemed to go so much better for us. And so and so much more natural Yeah, that it kind of became our new staple of our format, which was we have an idea, we have a direction, but we let the conversation go where it may. And I think that was one of the first episodes where, if not the first, then it was definitely the one where we go, okay, this is our thing now. This is what we do. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. And Christine, she's part of the clique. She has been first responder. Now she's an APRN. She's a great girl. She's easy to talk to. So it just kind of made, oh, this makes sense now. <laughs> like, I get it. Like, this is what we should do. And we try to do that with, like you said, with other guests that we've had. And obviously it was just Tom and I on. And we're talking something like, you know, either the kidney stones or, or something where we're trying to provide education. We do do some research and stuff. But when we have guests on, we kind of let, we have them on for a reason. Whether it was Jen from Cardiac or uh, Dieta for Palliative Care. I mean, it was, we want to pick their brains as far as you know, what can we do better from family practice? What can you bring to family practice? And so we really let that conversation, you know, it's, it's more of a conversational podcast that we try to be educational and entertaining and i will say that there there is a mix for me that i still do research but i don't want it to sound like a powerpoint presentation i think that's the entire purpose of what yeah. we said we don't want out of this podcast was we don't want to bore people we don't want it to sound like we're reading from a textbook so if you don't you you got to know some of the topic but i don't want it to sound rehearsed pre-formatted yeah. yeah exactly versus that's also one of the things i might do a little research when we have a guest coming on about some big points but honestly i feel like it's easier to talk about them and try and gain knowledge that i think our listeners want to know when i'm asking the same questions like well hell i didn't know that i'm going to have to assume that there's a large majority of our listeners that don't know it either so if i come in there going oh well i already know all this i just read this in a textbook last last night or i googled it then what am I really going to learn from our guests? That's why we brought them on. Yeah. What's your next memorable episode, sir? And again, I think I have some honorable mentions at the end, but another one that came right to my mind was the sex episode. Hmm. Yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and honestly, it was a combination of things. It was a combination of the topic and two, again, the guest you and I, just all of us talking, was straight up could have been us sitting on a bar stool, yeah, six drinks in, you know, have you know six beers in, having a really fun conversation. And Pollyanna was an amazing guest. She she knows her topic inside and out. Uh huh. See what I did there? But uh, and yeah, yeah. So she knows her topic well. She, former ER nurse, she's been in all of our shoes, or the majority of our shoes, certainly your and I shoes. And she was able to kind of say, hey, and I get some of it might have been hippie-ish to people listening on the outside, you know, when she was like, well, it means light and form. and But I think if you listen to her message, which was learn how to become comfortable with yourself, these are things that you can do to help yourself, your partner. If you really listen to what's going on, it was a truly wonderful thing she was talking about and i hope some people visit her websites and learn some more stuff from her she's a great gal she really knows what she's talking about and honestly it was just an episode that i think we could have done three episodes like it we could have okay. just talked and talked and talked and i would not be surprised to have more many more episodes with Pollyanna in the future i would agree with that yes my next was actually one that you and i did by ourselves and it was more of a, re a recent episode but it was it was fun. That's kind of why it stuck out to me. And that was the review of Flatliners. I almost picked that. That's one of my honorable mentions. <laughs> it was just, it was a fun episode. It was, you know, we were trying to just kind of cut loose because we'd had some really serious episodes. And, you know, we watched this movie and then we, honestly, I really, really, truly loved your, uh, all your little Billy one-liners that you had were just hilarious and amazing. 
and it was kind of fun to kind of do an ode to to our buddies over at Pop Psych 101 um, as far as, you know, kind of reviewing a movie and, and looking at the medical, medical accuracy. And Mike actually reached out to me and he's like, that was a great episode. I didn't get lost. I could kind of follow along with the movie. And he said he loved your one-liners too. So it was just, it was a fun episode. I think uh, Billy ass clapping Mahoney was uh, <laughs> one of my finer moments. Yeah, that was pretty. So, good. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I also, like I said, that was, it was so tough for me to, that was the point of the show. We said, we're, let's pick three. But there were so many. I really were right there. Flatliners was one of them. And I hope, honestly, I would really like us to do that again soon. Like, I had a blast doing that. But honestly, here's the weird part. Okay, this is the odd part for me. Is that in order for us to try and make the episode as easy listening as possible for you out there listening to us now, we actually had to do a lot more work setting it up yeah. than we normally do because we had to make sure that the movie and what we talked about was in chronological order. So instead of just having a free flowing conversation, which would have been all over the place and surely the listener would have got lost. Yeah. We actually had to have a very regimented and detailed set of show notes. And that was honestly one of the hardest prepped episodes <laughs> we'd ever had to have something that sounded like it was totally off the cuff. Yeah. Like the more off the cuff it sounds, the more work we actually put into this thing. Yeah. So it's, it's very true. You took a lot of really good notes and I had never watched the movie <laughs> before. So I kind of just sit back and tried to enjoy the movie and tried to pick up on some of the, the bullshit that we kind of, you know, picked up along the way as far as like the, the poor C. Like he repelled, he, re, yeah, he repelled out of his window. Like he doesn't have stairs. What was going on? But anyways, so yeah, construction. Yeah, sure. You keep, you keep saying that Ben, but. <laughs> It's not true, but yeah. So honestly, Flatliners again for the same reasons. It was just fun. I mean, it was a lot of work pre-show, but at the same time, I realized people were listening to us talk about watching movies, and I watch a lot of movies already. So I'm like, man, this is comedy gold here, my my friend. So, right, what's, your, what's your last one, Tom? So don't get all sappy or corny on me. Oh. My last one was going to be sappy too, so we'll see if it's. I I wonder if it's the same one because again, I don't think I think people think we're joking, but we're not. We totally did not discuss any of this beforehand. The first episode. No, oh, no, okay, it's not mine. And I am not lying. I have never listened to it. I have never been able to bring myself to listen to it. It was less, and here's the sappy part. It, it it's less what we did or how well it sounded or how well thought out or put out or the product itself. It was that you and I took that leap that we finally said, I'm fucking done talking about doing a podcast. Well, so here's and I, I think we've talked about it before, but for those of you that have not heard it, especially Bjorn down in Antarctica, you may not have heard the story. So I had been pestering. I actually pestered another friend about a, about doing a podcast. And around the same time, I was pestering Ben. And I said, we should really do this. I was like, there's got to be some kind of way. And so I kept pestering. I was like, how cool would it be, though, if we had a podcast? Like, I love talking. Clearly, let's do something. And so Ben put right. that big brain to use and finally figured it out. And then then the thing was, is that I became the chicken shit. Like, I was like, oh, um, are you sure you really want to do this? He's like, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I'm like, I don't think it's so good anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and so finally, so finally, Ben basically threatened me and... I remember it right now. I remember putting in my headphones. I waited till everybody went to sleep. I was laying on my floor in my living room while we Skyped and we talked about diets. Yep. Which is something we should probably, we should probably readdress a couple of those first episodes. But I think that the act of doing it, maybe not how well the show sounded, because I certainly sounded like a bucket of assholes, I'm sure, quality wise. We both. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, really? um, quality bad. wise and the flow of the show and how we acted I think we were trying so hard not to cuss and I was probably sweating bullets just talking because I knew somebody might listen to it but it was still something that my best friend and I got together and said no we, we, we can do this we can do something and maybe we can make it be something and so while it may not be the gold trophy winning episode as far as content or delivery it it's what set 
all of this in motion. It's what set what we're doing right now in motion. And so uh, as sappy as it is, that probably my most memorable episode. That was pretty sappy, but um, shut uh, the fuck up. How about that for sappy? So- <laughs> Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you've never uh, listened to it, I'm going to play you just a little snippet of just the uh, sound quality. Fuck. Just, so you, just so you can hear yeah, but, how much better it is. Oh, you ready? God. Yeah, I'm listening. You probably shut down after you heard that word so if you have any questions you can call me after hours you can come back into the clinic we can talk more whatever we need to do but you know here this oncologist is telling them they have cancer which to them is life-changing uh, negatively and now it's come to find out that some of them don't and it was just basically a, a scheme to get money on top of that i mean when you go back to patient oh. trust with any provider advanced practice or or physician so yeah, I mean, we both sounded bad. Like just the quality. Well, I sounded, I sounded, I think like Ed Morrow in 1947 on a NBC News broadcast. <laughs> so that's like, and today the Germans attacked again. Like, oh my god, that was ridiculous. Like I was like, oh Ben. I mean, you could tell sound quality wise, but Ben, ben sounds all like, well, like Ben. And then there's me. Uh, he was good. Uh, he, well, it, it was good enough. Let's put it that way. We didn't die the first day, so there it was. All right, Ben. I'm. I actually. I want to know. Let's hear All it. Right. What is it? Mine was sappy and and sentimental for another reason. It was episode ten, which was affectionately called Andy's heart. Ah, yes. As you know, and as a lot of our listeners, if you listened back then, know, you know, Andy is a personal friend of ours. He's also a patient, uh, which he references, so I'm not breaking HIPAA. <laughs> Let me clarify that. Might want to bleep it out anyways after the last doxing episode. Yeah. So. We'll be all right. uh, <laughs> but just to hear him go from Elvad and hearing that mechanical sound for years when you'd put a stethoscope on his chest to then knowing that he got a heart transplant, watching his recovery through that, and then coming back to the clinic and putting my stethoscope on his chest and hearing a heartbeat. Uh, it, it, it just, yeah. Um, so that's probably one of my most memorable episodes just because of his story. And I really hope that his story makes somebody else want to give that, that final gift of organ donation uh, to save someone else. So again, knowing Andy and friend of mine, not just that, though I've never taken care of him. So I, I do miss out on some of the stuff you were just talking about, the tactile, you know, listening right. to him exactly. But being friends with him on social media and seeing all the stuff he's doing and how he's trying to live life to the fullest. Yeah. And getting to appreciate that gift that he's been given. And he's a very talented writer and he puts out books and short stories very often, and I hope people pick them up and read them and buy them. He also does a really good job of dissecting movies and getting to the point of like how the directors get to stuff. So it, it's actually pretty fascinating to read some of that, or at least that's how I took it. Maybe that's not how he intended it, but that's how I took it. And even though me and him don't always have similar opinions <laughs> on certain things, I would hope that Andy knows that I want nothing but the best for him. And that his story is very powerful. And it was truly amazing for him to let us into that part of his life. Because he certainly didn't have to. No, Yeah, no, I agree. And I would plug his recently re-released book, which was probably honestly one of my favorite books that I've ever read. And if you've never read it, I would recommend getting it, The Suicide Game. Amazing I, book. No, I, I will have to read that one. I have not read that one. Is that? I'm sure that's on Amazon, correct? Yeah, yeah. But it just got re-released. Uh, another publisher had released it and changed the name from the original. The original it was called The Suicide Game. And it got re-released under another name, and I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But then it just got re-released by another publisher under the original title. So it's a great book. Great, great book. But anyway. That's but my the sense. point is, is – yeah, the point is, though, is like you said, he, he led us into his lives and now he's able to continue to share those stories 
because somebody gave him that ultimate gift of life. And I think you're right. That's one of those few episodes that even if we did nothing else, I hope somebody looks back and says that one they did right. Yeah. That one they got. I do have at least two honorable mention ones. Okay. That I, I want to throw out real quick and we don't have to go over them in great detail, but uh vasectomy. Huh. That was a vasectomy. Fun. Who was it? Owen? <laughs> that was, it was less fun in person <laughs> than it was doing the pre-show and then talking about it afterwards and being that guinea pig, like, so here I am and I'm a whole person. And then a couple of days later, like, oh my God, <laughs> I went through an operation and I'm going to talk about it on my junk. So there, that was, well, uh, that was fun. I'm going to send you a link when we get off of here. I don't know. If, I am a huge fan of good mythical morning. I don't know if you watch that show on YouTube or not. It's Rhett and link. It's been on like 15 seasons, I think. It's been a it's a great show. I love it. I watch it every night before I go to bed. They got brosectomies. So they got vasectomies together. Like, like in the same room? Yeah, like they Rhett got his first and Link sat there with him and then Link got his while Rhett sat there. So um That is rough. I, I will send you the link. It is a hilarious episode. Uh that would that's probably the only thing that would have made our show better as we had we gotten <laughs> you know, the second is together, but oh, it was still, that was still a fun episode. And if there are any males out there or there's any wives listening who have husbands that are considering it or they won't. And that's actually one of the funny things I think we talked about that during the episode is it is a very quick, very clean, very easy procedure. Realistically, the hardest part is sitting still for a couple of days. So it doesn't feel like you get kicked in the balls if you walk around a bunch. True. And it is a much safer procedure to do on a man than a tubal ligation or a similar procedure on a woman. Think about everything that they already went through for us and what they have to go through. If they do get pregnant, 15 minutes to get snipped is nothing gentlemen. So sack up and get the vasectomy. If you're looking at one, I mean, and I don't want anybody to get one lightly like, Oh, well Tom dared me. No, (laughs) it is a major life decision. I'm just saying if it's like, well, I'm a man and I can't No, you can. It's not that bad. Just get clipped. All right. It's not that big a deal. And the last one I want to mention real quick is the Halloween special last year. I I almost picked that one as one of my favorites. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I, I had so much fun researching horrific things human beings do to each other in the name of medicine and tooth key still sticks with me as a horrible image in my head. Like just, I can hear that thing grinding and crunching someone's teeth out right now. No, it's the hot poker in the ass for hemorrhoids is the one that's, that that <laughs> still I don't know because I think it it's like I can hear like my tooth breaking in theory inside of my head from that tooth key and seeing one like oh god or plumbage where they collapse your lung on purpose and to fill it with acrylic balls yeah like there's that part of me that goes who the hell thought this was a great decision <laughs> to we're gonna let it rest by collapsing it I'm like I don't think that's what lungs are made to do. So right. I'm not a pulmonologist, but that seems bad. And just one I have for um, honorable mention of just kind of a group of episodes, and that was the Jeff episodes that we did where we had a little inside joke going on you uh, where we were <laughs> slipping in the scrub references, which was just hilarious for me just to see that you didn't pick up on that until afterwards, which I thought was yes. kind of fun. Again, anything that uh, sticks at the Tom seems to be popular <laughs> on it, the it works. podcast. It does. So... I have an idea, unless you do, for the end of this this episode. Well, I, I, I have a few more uh, listener oh emails or videos and or uh, audio, so I, we'll do those, and then then we'll hear out your idea, sir. All right. So Jen sent us an email. This is also going to be hashtag pantless Jen, as we refer to her in the live episode. Yeah, which that was also fun. We should do uh, another live episode. We will. Yeah. It's so nice to have JSP keeping me company in the car or when I'm doing housework or when I'm just laying around with no pants. Happy anniversary and keep up the good work. So, what Jen, pantless we Jen. pantless Jen, <laughs> big love from JSP, from myself, and from Ben. Thank you for she, she seems to be there frequently to be supportive of the show or leave us comments. And we truly, honestly appreciate it from the cockles of our hearts. We, we appreciate everything that you do, Jen. 
All right, Tom, we're going from hashtag pantless gen to another gen. Apparently, we are popular with the gens, man. I don't know. Uh, but this of is... course, we're popular with the gens. Well, hey, you know, you got to be popular with somebody, right? I have a next name, Jen. I'm just saying. I have a nurse named Jen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was there going on. Do I have an ex named Jen? If you're an ex nope. of mine, and your name is Jen, and I forgot you, I'm sorry. I don't think I did, though. Anyway. Uh, this is on Instagram. It was nurse underscore Jen underscore RN said, keep up the great work as an RN and FNP student. I find your show both educational and real. Thanks so much. Go Browns. Oh yeah. I've, I remember this girl and to Jen, I say, Oh, and I know what she just screamed in her car. So it's okay. And what did she scream? Uh, for anybody who may not know. I know what she screamed. I know. And for you unwashed heathen hordes out there that don't know the answer, when someone screams OH, those two glorious letters, the only appropriate response is to scream back in an equally amazing voice, I O. That's correct. And uh, at that point, you can consider yourself blessed, and then you can move on with the rest of your day. But I promise you, you'll feel incomplete if someone yells OH at you and you don't respond with IO. It, it just, there's something wrong. As you should. It'll, be yeah, you should. Exactly. Thank you, Jen. Awesome. I We appreciate all the shout outs. I will say I wanted to do something special real quick. Um, yes, sir. Because he, he, he already did a shout out, but he did the original shout out, Ben. And I think... We would be remiss if we didn't mention this person. I think we have to make sure that we shout out to Matt. I know he's got a whole moniker name on on the list, but he right. knows who we're talking about. And yeah. his famous, the most okayest podcast was so hilarious and so on point, I might add, that we turned it into a T-shirt that you can buy now. And yeah. So, Matt, you are immortalized in the just some podcast pantheon the temples that will be built in our honor someday will have your words scrolled in marble along the walls that sounds amazing <laughs> it, it does doesn't it and wow. i just made that shit up right now as i was talking like sculptures of ben and i in togas which by the way i've seen ben in a toga and it's it is as magnificent as it sounds and yeah, so yeah. what <laughs> it's so of course we were drunk and getting thrown out of bars but that's a whole another topic yes yep. so from the bottom of our heart and i i know ben's going to say something here in a, a second as well but i personally wanted to say a shout out to matt and to everyone else that they or they and their wives or their partners have been the longtime listeners and maybe they're embarrassed or maybe they just don't care enough who knows to send us those messages but they do contact us every once in a while and they let us know that they're listening both in healthcare and non-healthcare personnel and i can't thank all of you enough for everything that you've done for ben and i yeah i would agree with the tom's sentimental words there <laughs> it's the listeners that have made the show what it is i mean other than you and i i mean we can't immortalize everybody uh, in togas just just for you and i um <laughs> yes but, everybody else gets like an olive branch that's it but we do appreciate everybody who tunes in and listens to us it's amazing to see how the show has grown and continues to grow and i think we'll continue to grow over the years tom i mean we may be 70 years old and still doing podcasting hell who knows i'm pretty sure we'll be holograms we'll be holograms by that point that would be some cool shit too you know it. Yeah, but I mostly record in my underwear or no shirt on, so that's... That is true. That's a fun fact that people don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we FaceTime, so I can see it. Yeah, it's good times. Well, not the underwear part. He just gets no. the, the glorious upper body, so... Well, but, you know, if we're in holograms at that point, I'm assuming we're going to be, like, uh, on uh, Ready Player One, and you'll be able to just... Yeah. I was going to say, bravo. I was just going to say, I bet you we can just alter our appearance. So that's yeah. perfect. Ready Player One. Terrible movie. Great book, though. Got great book. One of the best books. But God, that movie. Ugh. So anyways, we have another special shout out, don't we, Ben? I got one more, and this one's an audio. This is, this is the special audio that I wanted to say for the last one. 
you know, as you know, and as we have, have talked about on the show several times now, we are on all seven continents, including the continent of Antarctica. And so when we sent out the message saying, hey, if you want to send us something, you know, we'll get it on the show. Our buddy Bjorn down in Antarctica sent us a, uh, actually it sent us a video, so we'll just play the audio from it. Here you go, man. Hello, Tom and Ben. Greetings from Antarctica. My name is Bjorn Ove. I'm from Norway and I'm currently working here at a troll station in Queen Maudland in uh, Antarctica. I've been here since October last year and will be here about three months uh, before I'm going home. I enjoy listening to your podcast. Keep up the good work and I'm still listening uh, also when I'm coming back to Norway. I think that's just awesome that our buddy from Antarctica reached out to us. I cannot tell people how big the grin on Ben and I's face is at this moment in time. Seriously, yeah. Bjorn, you are the fucking man, all right? I don't know many dudes from Norway, but I'm telling you right now, this guy is awesome. And I don't know what we should do. I want to do something for him. Bjorn, get a hold of us again <laughs> when you get this message. I want to do something for Bjorn. Uh, do you drink coffee? Something like that. Just get a hold of me. We we need to do something for Bjorn. But I agree. Yeah, we do. Yes, yeah, he. Fun. And not only that, he made a whole video for us. Like he was like, man, not only did I, I took you guys up on a dare, basically, <laughs> played you, and then found out I liked you so much that I took time in Antarctica, where it's like negative two hundred probably, and, and shot a video outside. for us. He's standing outside in the video. Yeah. Yeah, so he went outside and risked frostbite to his face to talk to us. Like, that's pretty freaking amazing, all right? And I think and that's special. Is, he's not medical, which even makes it even better. Yes. He's like, there's just something about you fuckers getting drunk and talking. Like, we love that in Norway. I don't know what he's going to say next, but I want to stay in contact with Bjorn. I do, too. Yeah, so, Bjorn, thank you very much, dude. That was so awesome. We really appreciate you listening all the way down. You are now dubbed officially, and I'm just making the spot call. I'm sure Ben's going to be supportive. You are now the uh, JSP ambassador to Norway and possibly all of Scandinavia. You know what? Fuck it. All of Scandinavia. Bjorn's the dude. If you got a problem somewhere in Europe or Scandinavia, call Bjorn for us. There you go. That's what you do. <laughs> like he is it. now the official ambassador to JSP for uh, Scandinavia and Europe. So I think that's fantastic. Well, Tom, how did you want to end the show, buddy? So this is going to be a little difficult because I wanted to surprise it on you. Because, again, we talk a little bit pre-show, but we didn't talk a lot. Right. And there's no way for me to do this directly because I wasn't smart enough and didn't think far enough in the head to write them down. I think we should ask each other five questions. Oh, (laughs) nice. I had not thought about it. Yeah, that's (laughs) Uh, well, all right. Shit. Let's do it. Yeah, so go ahead. Here, let me get, let me get the music queued up here since we're going to do a special. <laughs> Join us on a journey into the inner psyche of our guest as we ask five, 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 five questions. All right. Well, I guess this is going to be a special edition of five questions. This is for Tom and I. So, Tom, uh, question one, man. What's your favorite medical word? Uh, as of right now, I, I would have to say epistaxis. I like, yeah, that's nice. It's a tough one because the second one, maybe even tied for first, it would be Electronon. I really like Electronon. Electronon, huh? You throw Electronon in there and people go, what? And I'm like, yeah, gotcha. And it's kind of morbid, but in some way, priority one <laughs> trauma <laughs> alert also is like, oh, that's always a good one. I get your heart pumping. But I think uh, epistaxis. Um, okay. My favorite medical word, man, I don't know. This is hard when it's, <laughs> that's why I like asking yeah. the guest the question. Hmm. Huh. RVUs. That's my favorite medical word. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> and nobody's going to blame you for that either. <laughs> All right, Tom, if you could do any job in the world other than what you currently do, what would it be? I think... I would have to say astronaut. I could see that with you. Yeah. Um, mine would be what I wanted to be when I was like six. Uh, <laughs> and that was a lawyer. 
Oh, really? Because that's not what I was. I was going to guess a uh, trainer for the Dallas Cowboys. No, yeah, the, the Dallas Cowboys thing didn't come on until like later, a little bit later on in life. But yeah, no, I wanted to be a lawyer when I was a kid. I thought I was a great arguer. My wife would say I'm probably not now. So that's, a- <laughs> that's just <laughs> because she's got all the inside tricks to shutting you down. That's not the same as not being good at it. True, true. Tom, so your first car, what was it? So the very first car that you could consider mine was, I want to say it was an 89 or 90 Chevy Corsica. Okay. Was it a stylish ride or a rolling turd? Okay. So in all due respect to my parents who pretty much got it for me, I just had to maintain it and get good grades in school. So I don't want to shit on their memory, but it was completely a rolling turd. Like we called it the silver bullet because it was silver, but all the paint was chipping off and it had nothing to do with me. I took really good care of that car, but all the paint was chipping off. It was only a four cylinder and four door. And basically you had to tie it to another vehicle to get it to go over, you know, the speed limit. So I, I would say really turd based on looks, but it was, it was a safe car and it got me from A to B. So I try not to complain too much. My first car that I actually bought and initially, just by saying it, it's going to sound really nice until you actually Google what it looked like for this year. <laughs> a, ni- a 1982 Ford Mustang. And you're like, oh, it's a Mustang. No, this car was ugly as sin. It was like <laughs> rust brown. It wasn't, didn't have a spoiler on it. I mean, it was just, it was really ugly. Like, you'll need to Google what an 82 Ford Mustang looks like and you'll see what I'm talking about. So it was probably a stylish ride for the Mustang aspect, but it was completely a rolling turd because it was ugly. And then I busted the back window out of it with some speakers one night and lied to my parents for about 20 years about that. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that. They almost look like the Daytonas. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of what they were going for. Yeah. It's it's not a, a cute car by any means, but that was my first car. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So, uh, all right, Tom, if your house is on fire, everyone, including your pets are safe. What's the one thing you want to get out of your house? You know, it's so weird because you think after hearing this question that many times, I would know the answer. Um, everybody's out. Everybody's safe. We have a safe. It's a toss up. We have a safe that's supposed to be fireproof, but I doubt that that um, has like most of our birth certificates, stuff like that. It'd be a toss up between that and my wallet. Cause that's just a pain in the ass to replace everything in your wallet. Because if, every, if everybody else is already safe, realistically the animals and the family safe, I can deal with whatever else. Mine would be, and it's up in closet in my uh, living room. It is a quilt that my grandma made before she died. That would probably be the one thing that I'd want to get out of the house. Understandable. Absolutely. All right. Question five, Tom. Everybody's favorite question. You have $9.18 in your pocket. What all do you buy? Well, I think at this moment in time, I would probably get a Diet Cherry Pepsi and this is so tough. It's way tougher than I thought it was going to be. So it's just since I already knew the question because you just start going over like you you're imagining a convenience store that you stop in to get gas. Right. For some reason, that's what everybody imagines in court, including me. And it's like, okay, so what do you get? And then you start realizing everyone's going to be listening to your answer. And you're like, well, shit, I'm going to get picked apart because my first thought was Diet Cherry Pepsi and a bag of like Reese's Pieces, right? And they're like, well, why the hell are you getting sugar candy if you're not getting sugar in your pop? And I'm like, well, damn it, that's a pretty good question. But I don't have I don't have a direct answer either. So, But I'll say well, Diet Cherry Pepsi and um, psh, 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 psh. yeah, Reese's Pieces. See, I wish we had Diet Cherry Pepsi here. We don't. Um, so whenever I can find that, I really, I, I, I can tell I, you where to find it. I, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. For me, it would be, it depends on the time of day. If it's morning, I'm going to get two 20 ounce diet Pepsis and a sausage, egg and cheese croissant. <laughs> if it's afternoon, it's probably going to be the two, di- the two diet 
Pepsis and like a sour, uh, the sour bright gummy worms or uh, the sour bright eggs that they have. So I like the sour gummies. Yeah. That is always a good choice, my friend. It's weird. Uh, We have found by accident, me and some of the, the girls that work in my office, one of the local gas stations has like that chain. Like, I don't want to say any brands or anything, but that local gas station brand has their own brand of gummy bears, like Quickie Mart brand gummy bears. And you're thinking that can't be that great. They are fantastic. They are absolutely fantastic. They come in a bag with two flavors. And the key is you have to get one of the red and one of the blue in your mouth at the same time. And it's like magic. It's absolute magic. So (laughs) it's just one of those things. I didn't think about the time dilation there. Like, Day, night. Because, yeah, now yeah. a sausage and cheese croissant sounds fantastic. Doesn't it, though? It's really it good. I this morning. I'm like, yeah. The, cor- the, the linchpin of this, though, is Diet Cherry Pepsi. That's coming down no matter what. So, Well, Tom, that concludes five questions. And so I guess this is going to wrap up our special anniversary episode. One year down, many more to go. Unless we die of heart yeah. attacks because we eat sausage, cheese, croissants, and Diet Pepsi for breakfast. Well, <laughs> I got enough time for I'll be well taken care of. It'll be fine. <laughs> you know, I'm to get sappy with you here for a minute as we're wrapping up the end of this episode. I just want to tell you personally, thank you for talking me into this. It, it took you several months of hounding me all the time about it. <laughs> but honestly, there's not another person that I would want to do this with every single week. This is a hobby that we don't make any money from I mean, we make kind of enough to help support the show. Uh, you know, so it's almost self-sustaining, but there's nobody that I would rather do this with every week. I truly enjoy it. I truly enjoy getting to spend time with you talking to you. So thank you for uh, talking me into this. I love you, man. So, <laughs> Well, I guess if we're, we're going to give some love shout outs to each other, I have to say that, for those that don't know me, some of you that listen to the show know me, but the vast, obviously, 24,000 of you or whatever we're up to now don't know me. I am not the easiest person to deal with. I I often say this, and I think it, it sometimes is misunderstood. I'm kind of like a sports car. Not that I'm high performance. I'm way more difficult to steer or deal with than you imagine. But if you get used to it and you learn how to handle it, you can get a lot out of me. All right. So that's, that's why I tried. I to, like that. yeah, that's I, good. Is, is that not pretty apt? I think like, no, that really Tom is, is yeah, a complete good. fucking pain in the ass until you figure out how to get him to do what you want. And then he'll do just about anything. So yeah, not that Ben has ever had to manipulate me or I don't think he has, but he has, He's put up with me, and there are those days, as a matter of fact, before this episode, where I am angry and a bitching, and Ben is able to just say, Here, here's what we need to do, buddy, and, and everything's going to be okay. And somehow, it always ends up okay. So, I can't say enough. I am glad you finally caved. <laughs> and then I'm also glad that you finally convinced me to actually do what I had been talking about doing for so long. And thank you for all. And I I cannot stress enough to everybody out there that this podcast would not be possible without Ben, that he is truly the heart and soul of everything we do at Just Some Podcast. And truly every accolade is 99% Ben. And I can't say that enough. I also want to give a quick shout out to our wives and family who put up with us doing stupid shit and sometimes and or dragging them on the show. (laughs) And um, the family episode was interesting, to say the least. It was fun. Yeah, it was good. So to Ben, you are my brother from another mother. I love you, man. And again, I I agree with you. I have fun with every guest we have. Every guest. Maybe not so much Jeff because he was mean to me and made fun of me with scrubs. But (laughs) everybody else I have a blast with. But at the end of the day... And I think we have said this before when we are trying to make a decision for a show. This is our show. This is what we want to do. And yeah. no matter what else happens, as long as 
we are able to keep working together and make things happen. I, I hope the show just continues forever and that we just get better and bigger and finally Stockholm or Oslo or whoever, wherever the fucking Nobel Peace Prize is. I'm so tired. I can't remember at this moment in time. They need to call with my damn Peace Prize pretty soon. And then I can say, <laughs> OK, uh, now the show is bona fide, motherfuckers. So there you go. But seriously, though, thank you. Thank you for putting up with me and thank you for making this show what it is. So there it is. And I would like to give a th- thank you, sir. I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to all of our listeners. All oh, of our guests. damn it. Those people. <laughs> yes, those people. Even Oklahoma. <laughs> even yeah. Mississippi. Even Vermont. Oh, um, yeah. Vermont. Those maple syrup thank troll. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for downloading Thank you for putting us in the top 100 of medical podcasts in the United States routinely on Apple, iTunes, which is just crazy to think about. Knowing how many medical podcasts are out there and we are routinely in the top 100 is just insane. Thank you for making us a radio show. Yes. And uh, again, w- when I think about our first episode, no way. No way did I say right. Yeah. Just no way. Did not. Would not have crossed my mind. It was something fun for us to do. There's no way I would if you had said, Tom, we're going to be the Apple top 100 cons- consistently. That's where you're at now. Hopefully someday we're number one. But I mean, to know that consistently out of all those podcasts, we're in the top 100. No, I would have never believed it. It's true. I know. It's kind of crazy. But anyway, if yeah, you like us, what you know you do, because you're listening to us, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that, just on podcast on the web, www.justonpodcast.com and our email Send us some love. Tell us you want to be on the show. Tell us Tom sucks. Or that you want more <laughs> Tom Pan. Yeah. Uh, more episodes where Tom is tortured. So. Exactly. See? Like, let's see if we can just hit him with a hammer and see what happens. <laughs> we'll record it. Uh, <laughs> Megan would probably sign up for that. Um, yeah. Admin just some podcast dumb com. So, Tom, buddy, on that note, man, it was it's been a great year. Uh, but let's get out of here and let's look forward to season two and on to the, the next year. I know we got some some fun stuff coming up. I know we got some big stuff that we aren't talking about yet coming up. But, you know, we're just going to keep getting bigger and better and, and trying to put out a great educational and entertaining podcast. Yeah, so that people will like us, blah, 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 blah. And a huge shout out and thank you so much to our buddies Falcon 5 Oats for allowing us to use their music. Also, if you need royalty-free music for your podcast or projects that you're doing, please check out filmmusic.io. That's where we got the rest of the music that we used in this episode. So special thanks to Sasha Ende for uh, the use of the music. That is filmmusic.io. On that note, I hope everybody has a great week. Hey, everybody, please stay safe out there. We can swore.